COTR work closely with the carefully selected and approved group of agent partners to achieve its goal of internationalization. Well, before we get to the exciting part, I just uh, would like to let you know that if you, you would be having any question related to COTR, please do not hesitate to drop it in the Q&A section in your control panel. And if you would be having any technical question, please drop that in chat box. I know everyone is curious and interested to learn more about COTR, its program, its state of art facilities on campus, and of course, its welcoming local community. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce Mr. Lee Ying Wayne at COTR. Um, Wayne, over to you. Thank you, Karishma, and good morning again, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I, I know it's uh, early in your day and I, I appreciate you sharing some time with me. Um, I've given a similar presentation uh, or webinar earlier in the year uh, as we were building towards our fall recruitment. Um, as you may or may not know, we, we've completed the fall cycle now and we're looking at winter. Um, the information that I'm sharing with you today, though similar, um, still applies to the winter semester. Um, towards the end of the presentation, I will talk about how courses will be delivered and rolled out, um, not just this fall, but what I expect to see uh, in January 2021 and potentially into the spring semester as well. So welcome, thank you for joining me uh, to talk about College of the Rockies. If you're not familiar with the college, um, uh, hopefully we can provide enough information that, that you feel comfortable enough to work with M Square um, and, and potentially recruit and work with students uh, to bring them to the College of the Rockies in the coming year. So I wanted to talk about, first of all, um, how we approach education and what we expect of our students. Um, your students will see this um, model throughout the college as long as they're walking through the hallways on our website, everything we do. And the think, do, become motto is, is really fundamental to everything that we do. We, we want students to come away with you know, really strong critical thinking skills. We want them to be action oriented. And we really do want the students to become something that they um, aspire to be through their education at the college. So this is a really important and fundamental model for us. Um, we expect every student to be successful. And uh, I, I think our history suggests that um, we do a pretty good job at that. If you're not familiar with uh, College of the Rockies, uh, we are actually a, a small college in the province of British Columbia. Um, we're not in Vancouver, and I don't ever want to be in Vancouver. Uh, we're located in a city uh, called Cranbrook, and Cranbrook is the, the red star on your screen. Um, we're located in the middle of the Rocky Mountains, hence College of the Rockies. Um, and we're a very lifestyle oriented community because of the mountains, because of the environment around us. I'm really looking for students who can strive for that balance between learning in the classroom and learning about themselves as they do different things outside of the college walls. So there's lots to see and do. Um, we're definitely four seasons, so your students will experience winter, spring, summer, and the fall seasons with us. Um, we're not actually a very cold community in the, in the winter time, even though we're in the mountains. However, we do get snow, and I'm not gonna lie to you about it, we, we do get snow. Last winter, for example, um, at the peak of it, I, I think we had easily a meter of snow at some points, um, but it is temperate. I, I think the coldest it got last winter was maybe minus 15 degrees Celsius, so not bad. Um, you do you do get used to it. Um, so some of the things that Cranbrook as a city offers to young people, I, I think first and foremost importantly is that there's lots of part-time job opportunities. We have everything from Walmart to uh, Home Depot, a large grocery chain in uh, Canada called Superstore. And a lot of our students tend to get jobs or part-time jobs at those large big box retailers. But 
Also, a, a smaller number of students get jobs with local businesses. So, for example, one of our students uh, was working for a local business who ran a, a water company um, where they provided bottled water to different organizations. And, and she really enjoyed her work there. They loved having her working there. And it was just a really wonderful thing to see and do, um, to have her experience that. And, and she, she really enjoys it there. Um, for parents, I think it's important to convey that Cranbrook is a safe, clean, and modern, friendly city. We have virtually no crime in Cranbrook. And I, I think for um, parents, as you speak to them, that becomes one of the really important things for them to um, be reassured of is, is the lack of crime. I said a moment ago that we're not in Vancouver. And so as your students travel from India, they will likely land in either Toronto or Vancouver. Cranbrook is actually another 90 minutes by airplane from Vancouver. Uh, if they were to arrive in Toronto, they would have to fly from Toronto to either Calgary or Vancouver again. We're only one hour by airplane from Calgary. So we're, we're kind of central to the two major airport cities. Um, but that said, a 90 minute flight or an hour flight is not that terrible to go through. And it, it's just a lovely flight. If, if it's a clear day, you can, you can see the mountains for most of the journey. It's just lovely. I think the other part that I think it's important to convey to parents is the, the affordability aspect of where we are. You know, I said a, a moment ago, I don't want to be in Vancouver or Toronto, mostly because of the density, but also because there's a cost to it. So the cost to live, for example, in Vancouver is much, much higher than it is in Cranbrook. On average, I would say it, it costs students between $100, $150 a month for, for groceries. Um, you know, rent is affordable, housing is affordable. Um, it's a small community and close-knit, so you get to know and see people and recognize them very quickly. So it's a really nice small community for, for a student to spend some time in. Moving on to the college, um, you know, the college has is, is been around for a long time, but the campus itself has con continually been kept modern and enjoyable. And I, I think it's a really nice setting for students to come and learn at. Um, the, and, and I'll talk about it uh, again, because of our size, our class sizes tend to be smaller as well. Um, so that's important for students if they're coming from a larger center to actually realize that they can get to know their instructors, their classmates, everyone at the college, and that's, that's really important for them. So College of the Rockies is a public post-secondary college in British Columbia. We have well over 35 different kinds of programs ranging from uh, one-year certificate programs. By and large, the, the bulk of our programs are two-year diplomas. We also have a four-year degree and we also have uh, a two-year diploma program for students with a credential already from India. Uh, so we have a post-degree diploma in sustainable business practices that, that they can consider. Popular programs for us, uh, University Arts and Sciences, um, the suite of business programs, hospitality for sure is an important and, and popular program for us, tourism, and, and for the select number of students, if they want to go into the engineering field, uh, we can help them get there with some of our, our basic engineering courses and programs, which they can take with them as they transfer to different universities and colleges within British Columbia. Uh, we are part of the BC Transfer Guide. And if you're not familiar with the BC Transfer Guide, it's, it's basically a collection of information within British Columbia. So every college and university knows everyone else's courses. And so if students start at College of the Rockies and their goal is to transfer to a university, for example, that university knows exactly the courses that we've delivered to that student, and, and those credits will follow with the student when they transfer. So it's a really nice seamless transition for those students. Um, we also have partnerships with institutions across Canada. Uh, we have a partnership with a university in Australia and some in the UK. Um, so I mentioned the smaller class sizes a moment ago. 
Um, my hope is that students take advantage of all the resources that they have access to, whether it's learning support, um, faculty support, um, student support from my team as they arrive. Um, students also have access to all the learning technologies that are, that are available to them, whether it's our learning management system when we use a, a system called Moodle. Um, there's free Wi-Fi throughout the campus, wherever they are in, on the campus facilities, whether it's in Cranbrook itself or at one of our regional campuses, there's Wi-Fi throughout all the, the facilities. And, um, you know, I touched on a moment ago about the affordable fees and cost um, by coming to a college like, your, uh, like ours. And so I, I think that's uh, going to be a really strong selling point um, for those students and their families. So um, every couple of years, we participate in a global survey and it's a survey of students. We, we don't survey anyone else. Um, so the, the survey asks students a number of things and areas. So things like student satisfaction or the quality of lectures or their transition from their home country to Cranbrook. And I'm, I'm very proud to say that College of the Rockies has ranked number one or nearly number one in a number of different categories um, in the in the ISB survey. Uh, some of the key areas that, that we rank number one in are things like overall student satisfaction, the quality of instruction and, and the lectures that they're getting, um, the virtual resources that students have access to, including our online library, um, the opportunity to work and study at the same time and the prospects of getting different kinds of part-time jobs for experience. And so you, you can easily see the different lists of things that, that we've done really well in, and we continue to push the envelope and, and, and try to get better at everything that we do with the international students as uh, they, they move through their program. I talked about our classrooms a moment ago. So there's smart boards in every room, which enables different kinds of instruction and learning. We talked about Moodle, which is our online learning platform. Um, we still maintain computer labs because we know um, up until COVID, a lot of students wanted to take advantage of working at the college with their friends or other students within the lab environment, and it didn't impose an additional cost on them. Um, we have really good fitness facilities, uh, whether it's the Olympic size track, the gymnasium, the fitness center. Um, in our last ISB survey, the cafeteria actually ranked number one in Canada, so we're really proud of that. I talked about the range of resources and, and textbooks and, and databases that students have access to. Um, one of the, the biggest costs that students incur as, as they make their way through post-secondary study is, is actually the cost of textbooks. And a lot of our instructors have, have moved toward um, online resources. So there is a, a, a movement within British Columbia itself for students to have access to uh, online textbooks. And the online textbook database is, is really key for students because by and large, the textbooks are free. So rather than asking as a student to spend for example, $80 for a textbook, uh, a, a physical textbook, um, we instead are asking students to use or take advantage of an online textbook, which doesn't cost them any. So they can keep the money in their pocket for other things um, and, and still have access to the right resources. Um, as uh, I remember when I was a student, I'd spend hundreds of dollars in textbooks and at the end of the semester I'd be trying to sell them as used ones and getting very little money back from them. So I think the online resources is going to be a really key element for us, especially as we are working now um, remotely um, and starting up the fall semester online. So uh, that's something to also be mindful of as you're talking to students about you know, the kinds of resources and access to, to resources that they'll have. So I want to move on to the popular programs, and, and this is by and large is, is not the complete set of programs, but in the last couple of years, these have, have 
I, I suppose Komoot is the more popular programs for international students. So we, we have a couple of associate programs, whether it's the science programs or the arts programs. Um, I have a full suite of business programs and it's not just your, your typical um, management programs or accounting programs or marketing programs, we have those. But beginning this September, we have a new financial services diploma program. And a program like that is, is really key because it, it helps students get prepared to work in the financial services industry in Canada, whether it's banking, lending, um, investment markets, what have you. So it's a really cool program from my point of view because it's one of the, the few programs that actually has a co-op component built into it. And, and much like our hospitality program, which has a co-op built into it, the co-op piece is so key for students to get a uh, hands-on experience and practice within a controlled environment uh, in industry, working with clients, working with different people, and then bringing that experience back with them to the classroom. It, it's, it's such a powerful experience to go through. Um, I'm really pleased that the Financial Services Diploma Program has included a co-op as well. The hospitality program that I mentioned a moment ago has a co-op and much like the financial services, both the co-ops are paid for the students. So it's not simply going into the workplace for course credit, they actually get to, to earn money at the same time. And so those co-ops are really meaningful because not only are they getting the work experience, they, they get to keep some money in their pockets as well. Hospitality, tourism and recreation, um, I believe about three years ago, we're, we're split into three distinct programs. Um, three years ago, they were one larger program, but we came to realize that there's a, a really unique need um, and specialized skill sets that come out of each of those programs. And so when we evolved the hospitality diploma program a couple of years ago, it became very powerful for us because it was actually meeting a particular industry need. And so the hospitality diploma management program is delivered at one of our regional campuses in a city called Invermere. Invermere is about one hour from Cranbrook, but it was developed around the desire and the ask of industry in that area to have really qualified uh, college graduates come into the industry where they can start out at a much higher level than if they had no experience and quickly move into um, more and more progressive roles in their career. And so uh, I'm very pleased to say that the first group of hospitality students that we admitted into the program two years ago have graduated this past spring. Um, our second cohort of students who began uh, a year ago um, they are moving into their second year. And so uh, by next spring, we'll have another group of students graduating. And, and I, I love filling that program with students because it's such a, a meaningful and practical program for those students. I do have a couple of health programs if, if students are inclined towards the health field. Um, by and large, students who want a health program look at our kinesiology program. Kinesiology story talks about body mechanics and how um, people's physiology play into those body mechanics. And, and so a lot of the, the people who go through kinesiology, um, you know, they, they leave the college after two years with their diploma and they, they can find work in, in any number of cities throughout Canada. So, um, you know, great program. And of course, we have our post degree diploma in sustainable business practices. So again, if you have a student who has a credential from India already, um, their first or perhaps best option is to look at the post degree program. Um, logically, it makes sense on their study permit application um, because it shows that logical progression to IRCC. Um, it's a very powerful program, not only if they want to stay in Canada, but also if they choose to go back to India afterwards. Sustainability and, and business go hand in hand for us. And, and so it's a very meaningful credential for a student in that position to really consider. Okay. I talked a moment ago about course fees and the affordability of, of being in Canada. So this fall on a per course basis, 
Um, our course fee is $1,430. When we build out a student's um, LOA, um, we quote a five course fee of $6,325 per semester. So that's the cost for five courses. But if you do the math quickly in your head, 1,430 times five does not equal $6,325. So what we're currently doing is giving students a discount um, based on four or five courses um, because uh, we feel it's a, a good incentive for the students. It helps them manage their um, planning better, but it doesn't actually mean that they must take four or five courses. That's how we build out their LOA. Um, if they do indeed take four or five courses, they do receive the discount. If they took three courses, for example, um, they would pay the 1,430 times three. So there's, there's different ways that we approach this. We don't always encourage students to take five courses. Some students progress at a much different pace than others. And so sometimes in terms of planning, three courses makes more sense than taking five. I absolutely understand that it extends the student's program, but I would much rather have the students spend an extra semester with me and finish than force them to take five courses a semester and end up failing to and having to extend their, their program anyway. So as we're having conversations about new students and, and planning out their, their sequence of courses, we really want to get to know the student and, and what their goals are and help them plan appropriately because I'm not here to take their money and, and churn them through courses over and over and over. I really want them to be able to progress through their, their sequence of courses in a meaningful way and finish their program with success rather than making them feel like they're stuck in something and they can't get out of it. So um, this is the breakout of fees uh, for the next academic year. Um, this applies to winter just the same. And so as you are speaking to students or prospective students and their families, um, you know, we're, we're looking at 6,325 per semester. Okay, I wanna talk quickly about admission requirements because it's an interesting time for sure. So for all of our diploma programs, except the post degree program, um, we're looking for a minimum GPA in five high school subjects of 50%. Um, currently, we're looking for um, an IELTS or an IELTS equivalent of 6.0 overall with at least every band at six. For students who are applying to the post-degree program, we're looking for a cumulative GPA of 50% in their, in their terminal degree. So, you know, we, we do see applicants who have an undergraduate degree as well as a, a graduate degree. So we're going to look at their graduate degree because that's their terminal degree. For the post-degree program, we do look for an IELTS of 6.5 overall with no band less than six. So just an incrementally higher IELTS uh, for the post-degree students. Um, and, and honestly, uh, in the last, uh, I would guess year or two, students' admission requirements have far exceeded the minimum amounts that, that we've stated on our website. We've not increased our, our minimum admission requirements by any stretch, but what we are seeing is, is much higher uh, GPAs from, from applicants and even higher IELTS or equivalent scores from applicants. So I'm really pleased with how the quality of applicants is increasing over the last couple of years. This is interesting for me because um, be, because of the pandemic and COVID-19, institutions in Canada, and we're no different, we're trying to find different ways for students to be able to provide demonstration of English language proficiency. And so for this current fall semester, which begins in a couple of weeks, as well as the winter 2021 semester, as well as the spring 2021 semester, for admission purposes, we will accept online test scores from the Duolingo, from the IELTS indicator, and uh, the TOEFL uh, IBT special at home. I have heard um, of different application of um, language test scores by IRCC. 
And, you know, that's something I think every institution right now is having conversation about. Um, and I, I think that that will be an ongoing conversation into the winter semester. But I also realize that the testing centers are slowly opening and, and for some students, they may not have access, access to the testing center in a timely fashion. From my point of view, for the admission piece, I'm glad to look at one of these online test scores no differently than I'll uh, accept uh, the face-to-face -face test that uh, students traditionally produce. We are um, a college that also accepts the PTE. And so as the PTE centers begin to open, I'll gladly accept the PTE as well. So that being said, um, we're looking to acknowledge these online test scores all the way through to spring 2021. It's still a number of months away, but I still I don't know what's going to happen, you know, virtually a year from now. We may extend that further. At this point, um, we haven't made a decision on that yet. So feel free to encourage your students to provide us with the language test scores, which is, is convenient. I, I do like these online tests because they're also more affordable than the face-to-face -face ones. So it's, it's a bit of a balance for sure. All right. Um, I want to talk briefly about residence and accommodation because it's important that students know where, the, where they're going to live. So we currently have a residence at the college. It's 96 beds. It's kind of a shared pod style building, but we're also in the process of building a new residence um, still on the college site, which will provide us with a total of a, an additional 96 beds. So we'll have almost 200 beds available for, for students. Um, there's also apartments in town that students can, you know, meet friends and share an apartment with in town. And for a select few students, I suppose, there's the possibility of homestay. Homestay is tricky for me for international students, especially ones from India, because not or very few of my homestay families can actually accommodate uh, students with, with very specific dietary needs. So I, I do know that a lot of our students from India are vegetarian. And I have to say that not many of our homestay families are able to really meet the needs of those uh, students. So I'm a little cautious about homestay for students from India based on that only. But, you know, there, there's always an exception to a rule. And so if there is an opportunity for me to put a student into homestay, I would gladly do so. Okay, so this past year, um, College of the Rockies had about 26.3 students, sorry, international students um, at the college. Um, 219 students were from India in our winter semester. Um, so we have a very strong representation of students from India. Um, just, just, I can't say enough about the students that I work with from India. It's just a lovely group. And, and so, that said, I wanted to give you an opportunity to see how some of our students uh, in the hospitality program have been able to integrate into the community and, and for them to share um, how their, their transition was and then their experience about living in Canada was. So I'm gonna play this video, it was done by uh, one of the local uh, TV providers for us. Um, and it is just a lovely story. So I'll, I'll play this and, and then uh, we'll wrap up right away. Yeah. Every time they make it up there, but they never strike anything. I always think that they're hitting each other intentionally. <laughs> they just keep on pushing each other. No, it was not the ball. Studying abroad is a great way to see the world and experience a different way of life. 
And for these students from northern India, what better place to experience Canada than in the small mountain town of Invermere, British Columbia. Where I'm from, there is no mountain at all, so I haven't seen any mountain in my life. I only saw mountain in TV. The first glimpse, just coming down the hill we have, it was like so good that the lake and the whole town was so adorable. Ekam Noor Singh, Himat Jatana and Mohit Sharma first arrived in the Columbia Valley during the fall of 2018, just in time for winter. When I searched about the town and I have seen like it gets pretty cold in winter and my teachers were saying uh, it you're gonna see snow you're gonna see snow in just few days and we were thinking like they are lying to us because there were no snow we woke up in the morning i just opened the window curtains and i saw that it's, it's snowing out so it was all white we just ran literally ran out of the main door in our shots uh, to just to see the snow and feel the snow what what actually snow feels like i didn't had a car and so I, I walked through on the snow to came to the college and it was quite fun because uh, the snow is goes into my shoes and my, my feet got wet. Our students were out in the field dancing and they were absolutely so happy they thought it was magical. Yeah, they just changed the sides. The Rockies came to this side and they, the other team just went to that side. I knew about ice hockey because I was taught in school, but I was not, uh, like, I didn't get a chance back in India to see ice hockey. I used to see the uh, hockey, ice hockey game on the TV when I, I decided to watch them live. It's uh, very interesting to see how they, they skate on the ice and how they play. First time I was confused at why they are, like, rushing so fast. <laughs> Why are they banging into each other? How do they skate and play hockey on the same time? Oh no! Like, yeah, it's true. Just as the students have embraced Invermere, Invermere has embraced them. Our community has been given a gift of uh, a little bit more cultural diversity and sharing in some of their traditions. We've had over 130 uh, community members come to the Invermere campus to celebrate Diwali, which is one of their biggest uh, celebrations in the year. So it, it works both ways. Reflecting on their experience here so far, the trio says without question, they've enjoyed their time in Canada. I don't want to leave for like next maybe 10 to 15 years. I just want to stick to stick to this area. I want to stay in Invermere till my graduation and after that I I definitely stay for for some time. I'm learning a lot from Canada. I think that's totally life-changing moments for me. So yeah, just a, a lovely experience that was shared by those students. Um, it, it's 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 just heartwarming for me to see students do well and, and get through programs and, and want to stay. So that that's really one of our goals through um, what we do, and, and so we look forward to having more and more students uh, from India and working through M Square. I, I think it's going to be exciting. Um, that said, I, I want to take a moment to talk about how the fall semester will roll out and what will likely happen uh, for the coming winter semester. So by and large, our fall semester will be delivered online. Um, the majority of our academic programming, which um, your students would be applying to, will be delivered online. Um, there's only a very small number of courses or programs, I suppose, that will be delivered on campus this fall, things that absolutely have to be face-to-face. -face. So for example, our welding program is gonna be face-to-face. -face. Our auto body program, face-to-face. -face. Um, but every other program that we have will be delivered online. And so the majority of our students, uh, uh, our majority of our international students will be starting their fall semester from home. Um, I expect January to be very much the same as much as I want students to be, you know, on campus, 
you know, getting engaged face to face with with instructors and and us getting a chance to work with them. Um, I'm not convinced yet that that we'll be able to do that. I, I hope I'm wrong, but it doesn't mean that that we shouldn't be pushing and, and recruiting for students for the winter semester because it's a great way for them to get ahead of their program by starting online. They get to save a little bit of money because they don't have to fly here. They don't have to pay for accommodation right away. And they still get the, the access to high quality education, the learning supports, everything else. Um, they just get to experience the exciting stuff of student activities and, and working with us for the next couple of years. Uh, we have to delay it for a couple of months. So uh, our fall semester is online and I expect our winter semester to be as well. Right, Queen. Thank you so much for the uh, presentation and uh, for uh, you know providing the latest update to our agents. And now this is a time to take questions from our audience. And I'll request everyone, please put your question forward into any se a section. We would be taking all of your questions here right now. Uh, so, uh, Vane, uh, the first question is: uh, Do we have Nepali student on our institution? Uh, I think I have one coming, um, but prior to that, no. I'd love to have more students from Nepal uh, not only apply, but, but get admitted to the college. Um, it's a very interesting group of students to consider working with, for sure. Um, just because the, the nature and environment of Nepal somewhat mimics some of our other um, programs that uh, could be really suitable for them. And so, for example, in, in one of my other regional campuses called Golden, we have something called the Adventure Tourism Business Operator Program, which, you know, I kind of envision would be a really interesting fit for them. Uh, of course, they're more than welcome to admit or apply to the programs in Cranbrook, just the same. Um, you know, the, the, the people at M Square know the education systems really well, and they know our programs equally well. And so I would encourage you, if you're working with students in Nepal, to definitely send them through, or at least have the conversation about them. Um, and I, I'd be glad to have them. Thank you, Wayne. And again, there is one more question. Uh, do we accept students from Bangladesh? Yes, we do accept students from Bangladesh as well. So if you're having any student, prospective student, you can definitely share their documents with us. It would be helping you out for the application process, complete application process. So, uh, Wayne, uh, the next question is that what all programs are available at COTR in which mathematics is not required? <laughs> it's a good question. Um, currently, tourism is the only program which has a bit different, I suppose, um, requirements than others. I, I know that uh, different groups of students struggle with different courses and it's interesting um i know that uh, i've worked with a lot of students who struggle with mathematics not just indian students but I've, I've worked with a lot of students from different countries who struggle with mathematics um we can certainly help students if 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 they start in a tourism program for example and it really they're not after a tourism program but they want say a business program we can work with them to upgrade their mathematics if that's what they want to do. Um, it's, it's not an impossibility. And, and so there's different ways we can help the student get admitted initially, um, but also help them make up or improve their, their background in a particular area, whether it's mathematics or otherwise, and help them get to the program they really want to go into. Um, as an aside, I, I'm a math teacher by trade. And, and so I understand the struggles that students have with mathematics. Um, and I, I struggle with some courses myself. You know, as a student, I struggle with, with particular courses. It's interesting to me because for a lot of students, the struggle isn't with the subject area itself. The struggle is because they had a very bad early experience with the subject and they, they continued to, they, they weren't able to grow past that. And I've worked with a lot of students who've gone through that kind of mindset as well. 
the, the first time that they have a good experience in that tough subject area, um, it, it somehow became easy for them. And so I understand that some students may have a weaker math background on their transcripts, but it may not be because they're actually poor in math. It may be because they, they've encountered a hurdle that uh, they just need help overcoming. So I, I guess to answer the question, tourism is the first place to start. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rain. Uh, Wayne, the next question is about the job prospects in the area. Uh, what is the further effect of COVID pandemic, if there is any? Yeah, that's a really fascinating question. It, our area, Cranbrook, Invermere, Golden, because we're in the Rocky Mountain Trench, is very tourism driven, hospitality driven. And so those industries in particular um are, are certainly struggling with with COVID and the pandemic but it doesn't mean that the industry will struggle forever i think and i fully expect that as the pandemic plays out as vaccines come into existence that those industries will become very robust yet again the other driver to our hospitality industry is the neighboring province to us of alberta a lot of Albertans come to British Columbia to play, whether it's skiing or golfing or, or whatever. And so they continue to drive the hospitality industry and the tourism industry in our area. So yes, we are struggling with seeing international tourists come through, but we're still buoyant because of the, the local um, tourism industry as well. Right. Thank you so much, Reen. Uh, coming to our next question, uh, is it about, uh, is the application fee is waived off due to COVID-19? No, we're currently not waiving the application fee, but I'll tell you a secret. I hope that we can do another um, MSM live session, um, probably in September or October and if you had joined me uh, for my previous session we did waive fees for a very short window of time and if i'm able to uh, have another live session in october then i fully expect to do the same thing um, so um, we currently are not waiving the application fee but um, I'm, I'm really expecting to have an application blitz um, come october but don't tell anyone else <laughs> you can still apply now <laughs> right we uh, do cotr offer conditional uh, offer letters yes and and the conditions can vary so for example you know we we could consider a student to be admitted conditionally if for example they're deficient in math for a particular program um, we could conditionally admit be it based on language score we can conditionally admit on a number of different things and so we take a very holistic approach to the student's application. And so if, if there's a reason or a compelling reason why you feel that we should consider conditionally admitting a student, I definitely want to hear from you because um, I'd be glad to talk to you about those students. Right. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, Wayne, uh, do we have any scholarships for international students? So up until this year or so we've we've always had um scholarship for continuing students so students going from their first year into their second year of the program and it was it wasn't just purely based on academics it was it was on volunteering and their participation at college and all this other criteria so yes we we've always had uh continuing student scholarships i give five scholarships of two thousand dollars every year um but that said, um, I, I think that there's really an opportunity to revisit how we approach um, awards or student awards for, for students. Quite honestly, and I, I understand why it's always asked, but quite honestly, I've never been a big supporter of admission scholarships, only because I've crossed paths with, with some other institutions who will say, okay, well, I'll give your student $500 as an admission scholarship, but when you look at their course fees, it's $500 higher than it needs to be. 
And I'm not here to, you know, rip off you or your students. I'm here to, to, to give you quality education. And so I'm, what I'm really looking at in the near future isn't so much a financial scholarship per se, but I'm also looking at things like bookstore credits for students, you know, to help them pay for, for some textbooks if they still need to purchase textbooks or they can use the $500 or whatever amount we land on for, um, you know, a sweatshirt at the, at the bookstore or a lunch card or, or something. So it's not necessarily directed to pay their fees because, you know, I, I know that fees are a big part of the cost of being a student there, but I also want to make their, their, their kind of daily experience more manageable as well. So those are the kinds of things I'm looking at. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping to have those in place um, this year at some point. Right, Green, thank you. Uh, Wayne, uh, is any PNP nomination is available? Would you like to answer this question? Sorry, can you say that again? Is PNP nomination is available? Oh. Um, that's a good question. Um, I think that's a, a question that is best consulted with an immigration consultant right now, especially given how the rules towards things like post-grad work permits are being touched on with the online startup. Um, the immigration piece is going to get tricky, um, not because it's going to get more difficult. I, I think that some of the rules that are currently in place will get reviewed again and there's going to be some accommodations. I, the short answer is yes, but um, stay tuned. Right. Uh, Wayne, the next question is about the deadline for the fall 2020 application. So the deadline is already passed and we are not accepting any more applications for fall. However, we are accepting application for January 20 intake. Uh, continue with this question. Uh, the agent also asked that how many hours a week classes would be? It depends on the number of courses a student takes. Um, so um, if a student has a full load of five courses, for example, um, three times a week, they, they should probably plan for oh, three times, uh, probably close to 20 hours of, of, of uh, classes and work. Um, I want to back up for a moment to the fall semester application. And, and I know Krishna is going to slap my hand for it. But I also know that there's a small number of students who you might have that's already in Canada. And that some of those students might be considering making a move. And so what I would like to put out there is if you by chance have a student who's already in Canada with a valid study permit, but is contemplating making a move, I can find a way to get them or consider admitting them for September. Um, only because they don't have to go through the hurdle of applying for a study permit, but they don't have to go through the, the challenges of the travel restrictions of COVID or the quarantine requirements. Um, the fact that they're in Canada at a post-secondary with a valid study permit makes it very easy. We're kind of third week of August right now. I don't normally do this, but if you by chance had someone who's, who's considering making a move, I would gladly look at them for September. Right. Thank you so much, Rain, for putting forward this particular information. This is very important to share with the agents. Thank you so much. And now moving to the uh, next question. Uh, it is about, uh, do we require English proficiency test for the student who have started from Nigeria, Africa? Nigeria is considered English speaking, technically. I think where this, this is the, the challenge with IRCC right now. Um, I think in pursuit of enhancing their study permit application, it may be in their best interest to have an IELTS or TOEFL. I don't require it for their admission, but it sounds like some countries through the IRCC study permit process 
are strongly encouraged to have that language proficiency score in place to enhance their application. Um, it's certainly something that, that you as agents may have better insight on through your experience with IRCC. Um, for me to admit the student, I don't need it. Right. Thank you, Reen. Uh, Reen, coming to the next question. Um, does your college allow students to apply for postgraduate work permit through university pathways? It's a good question. I've never had, I've never had anyone do that <laughs> because most of the students who go through the university pathway actually pathway into university. And so um, they would need to have or complete a credential um, in pursuit of that. And it's a good question. I, I would have to consult an immigration professional on that one. Um, my, my guess is no, um, but I, I couldn't say for certain. I've never had anyone ask me that before or even tried as a student. So I can definitely look into that if you wish. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is a um, very tricky question, uh, actually. Uh, there, has, uh, uh, there are uh, some news in the market that the GT is acceptable, journal test for IELTS is acceptable for studying in Canada. Is this is the case? Yeah, not for us. Um, for us, we've always looked for the academic uh, versions of the language proficiency tests. Um, you know, we, we acquiesced on the online version of, of language tests um, this past spring, just because, um, quite honestly, everyone else was doing it. So we had to keep up with the Joneses on that. Um, we, we will continue to ask for the academic version of the IELTS or the TOEFL or the PTE, just the same. Right, right. Right, Wayne. Uh, the next question is, do you provide any PG uh, animation related program? No, we do not have. Uh, we will make sure to, again, you know, share the list of the programs which we are offering at COTR after the session. Okay, uh, the next question, is there any age limit for international students? If yes, what is the minimum age for students to enroll at COTR? A great question. We, we ask that the student, when they begin their program, be at least 18 years of age. Um, so if they're 17 when they apply, but when they begin in their first year of the program, they, they are, turn 18, that's fine. Uh, on the flip side, the oldest student I've ever had was 72. Um, so I'm glad to work with any age. Right. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, the next question is, what are the documents required for offer letter? For offer letter. So we have a very clear uh, six-step admissions process. Um, so for a student coming out of high school, for example, I'm looking for their high school transcripts uh, going back to grade 10. I'm looking for their um, English test uh, proficiency test, so IELTS, TOEFL, PTE, the academic versions of them. Um, I'm looking for additional document documentation that might support um, any gaps in their transcripts. So for example, if a student appears on their academic transcripts to be missing a course, if they've made up the course somewhere, I, want, I need to see that. Um, you know, definitely, as you're working through any particular applicant, keep in touch with the the age the, the people at M Square. They they can guide you through the process for sure. Um, and of course, feel free to reach out to us. We'll, we'll gladly interact with you on any particular student. But M Square is your first point of contact on that for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, the next question is, uh, do we have international students from Africa and especially from Nigeria? Yes. Um, I generally, in every semester, have had students from Africa. So, in fact, this fall semester, I've got students from Nigeria, Zambia, uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, I'm missing one. Um, in the past, I've had students from Egypt. Um, 
I haven't hit all the African countries yet, but I've, I've hit quite a number. Kenya, yes, Kenya. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, Wayne, uh, can you please tell uh, a brief about like what is the, our current uh, refund policy if the visa got denied in the stage two? Sure. So, um, if a student has first of all approval in principle, so stage one, we will let them begin courses this fall. So they have admission to the fall semester. They've received approval in principle. They decide, okay, I want to take three courses from College of the Rockies. They begin their three courses and some point within the semester, hypothetically, uh, October, they ultimately receive a refusal. So the college's perspective on that is that the student has taken up a seat in a course or a series of courses in this case. The instructor has worked with the student in terms of providing instruction as well as feedback on their coursework. And so we have a waiver in place for students who have approval in principle and who wish to take courses that they will pay for the courses that they actually take. Um, so if a student takes three courses, they pay for those three courses. If they take five, same thing. Um, if they ultimately get re refused, they still pay the course fee. Any additional fee, so for example, if they paid for the whole year, um, our refund policy says that, that they will be refunded um, the additional amount for the second semester. So um, I know that uh, the, the, this approach is still kind of in discussion um, amongst my peers, but um, from my faculty's point of view, they are spending a lot of time taking their courses in a different direction to go online compared to face-to-face. -face. And so there's a cost to that. So uh, we're asking students to pay for the, the courses as they take them. Right. Thank you so much, Rain. And I believe that we are able to answer almost all the questions from our audience. And Rain, would you like to say something before we wrap up for today's session? Yes, of course. Uh, once again, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to present the call of information to agents. It's something that, uh, you know, normally we would be doing in person and then I'd be traveling to uh, India and visiting different offices. The, the, the most important thing I, I think that I want to be able to convey to each and every one of you today is that the College of the Rockies is open for business. We are looking for students and, and qualified ones at that. And the, the real goal is to find students who want to study in Canada. The, the goal isn't to get them to Canada as soon as possible. We want to be able to have them admitted, be able to take courses and come to Canada when they're best able to. I know that there are a number of institutions um, that are determined to get students to Canada sooner than later. But given the, the current environment and the travel restrictions that, that all of us are trying to work around, I feel it's in the student's best interest that they stay where they are, start studying online, because I've heard too many sad stories where students try to travel and they get turned around and then they're stuck. You know, I don't want a student to be stuck at any airport in any city and have not enough money to pay for a hotel or get home. That's, that's the worst thing and things that keep me up at night. So we're here to help you and your students. We definitely want students to be on campus, but at the right time. So um, definitely reach out to us if, if you have questions about that. Work with M Square and their team on the admissions process and uh, we'll all get through it together. Right. Thank you so much, Wayne. And I would also like to thank you all the participants uh, who attended this exclusive MSM and COTR agency summit. We really appreciate that you being here. We hope that this session was helpful and informative enough for everyone. And if you have any query, please do not hesitate to drop an email to us or contact our marketing manager, Sunny, or admission person, Neetu. We will be definitely helping you out with all the queries. Uh, until the next one, please take care and stay safe and healthy. Thank you so much. Thank you.